Oil tailings, what are they? How can you better understand them? First off, if you're ever going to involve yourself in anything in the law, the easiest, simplest way to try to understand legal concepts is understand the Latin word that it comes from. So, well, oil tea comes from actually an Anglo-French word, which means equity. So it's a concept in equity. How do we make things equitable? And that's what the concept is. So. Often, oil tea has to do with real estate because real estate presents itself with a very complex problem. You can't just take property and cut it in half and give it to two people. And often, most people's wealth is all held within a home. And so how do you divide a property, especially in the context of a divorce or maybe in an estate planning context? How do we give property to different people? Okay. So let's go through the definitions. Under common law. Now, whenever you hear common law, I want you to always remember that that is the legal system that came from Great Britain and that's judge law. So it's, it's the law that was created by judges over a long period of time. People don't really think about where their laws come from. They think, oh, the government makes laws and stuff like that. Well, that's just traditionally how some of the concepts came about. However, most of Great Britain's legal system came because judges were faced with problems. They would think it through. And the common law system was this idea that we were going to respect the decisions made by previous judges in other cases. Okay, so under common law, an amount that one co-owner must pay to another lawsuit to partition real estate. So when we partition property, that means we divide it up uh, in a lawsuit. So that after, so that each co-owner receives equal value from the property. Okay. So the concept of this, it comes from, or it's a lawsuit or partitioning property. How do we make this equitable? Okay. Two most common situations, a divorce or will probates. So if we have a will probate and one person is, is supposed to get most interest in the house, but we need to compensate another. So, or divorces is 90% of where you're going to see this coming from. So a divorce has happened. One person is either awarded the property uh, for a period of time to get it sold or to get it refinanced, some kind of situation along those lines. All right, so, uh, so this is a better description, especially in the state of Texas, because we have written in the Constitution, they call the oil, oil, OLTI a partition lien. And it says an OLTI a partition lien is a lien created when a fractional interest such as a half interest in a property is being conveyed to another owner. Okay. Normally a retained vendor's lien will only extend to the property being conveyed. Now I know there's a bunch of really uh, difficult jargon in here. We're not going to worry about most of it here because I just want to get a general concept of what's going on. And in the case of a fractional interest only to that interest, lenders aren't interested in loaning money on fractional interest in homes. Because this is the point I want to get to. So you have a problem. You have one person that's given a property. The other person is given an old tea lien. And so, uh, or let's just say, let's not even call it one. Let's just say someone else was given interest in a property. We have a will contest or a divorce. And one person owns 50%. The other person is living in the property. And we want to partition this property. Well, if you're a lender, someone trying to refinance this, you don't want to deal with this problem that one person owns one percentage, another person owns another percentage. So how do we get to what needs to be understood? An oilty interest is one in which they... Oh, I need to go back. Okay, sorry. Uh, an oilty interest is one in which the, the grantee acknowledges that the property is not subject to partition and agrees that the lien extends to the full fee interest. Now... If you're ever going to deal in real property, you're going to see this word fee and it's super confusing to people. People are like, well, full fee, like I, I'm not paying for anything. Fee comes from the root word fief or fiefdom. It has to do with a really old tradition within Great Britain and other European countries. And that was this idea that you used to, in Europe, you used to go and conquer a, a piece of land. 
and you were kind of like the guy that did that. And you had all these buddies that helped you take over the land. And so you would get, grant them fiefdoms, little areas of lands where they owed you taxes, usually in the form of servitude, where they would come and help you fight more wars so you can extend your land. But they would give, you would get these fee or fiefs or fiefdoms. Today we call them fees, fee simples, those kind of concepts. It means that you have the highest right to property. It's not like a leasehold if you're leasing a property. That's a different type of right to property. So now you're getting a little familiar with some of these terms. These are old, ancient, archaic terms having to do with rights to property. You hold a fee. And you're like, well, we don't hold a, a fee system where I have to pay some warlord. And then you remember, oh yeah, I, I paid my uh, federal government, my state taxes, which they used to go fight wars. So we still have those traditions that we go on today. Uh, uh, fee interest in the property. It is a way to extend a purchase money lien on a fractional interest in the homestead to a full fee ownership. Okay, so we get a little uh, under said So this allows, now we can bring in a mortgage company. They can come in and lean against this property because it's against the full interest of the property. So what does it look like? What would a partition of Ulti look like? This is what it looks like. An oalty of partition right here. This is what it actually looks like in a divorce decree. It looks, you know, uh, you know, the judge is awarding partition of the property and it's annexed into a certain amount that needs to be paid every month on starting this date on the property. If this part is not paid, then we're going to talk about what can happen. Okay, and why it's important in the state of Texas it's not so important in other states, but in the state of Texas, it's very important. What happens when you can't pay? When an OLT of partition is determined by a court order or granted by agreement, and the paying party is unable to make an immediate payment on the entire sum, the amount owed may be assessed as a lien against the property that is effective on the date of the judgment or agreement. The OLT lien is evidenced by a written instrument signed by the debtor that is that attaches when the instrument is recorded in the county real property records. Very important things there. You have to record these. They're not valid until they're recorded. It's an actual lien on property. It becomes due when payment doesn't happen. Now, why, why does this even matter? Well, well, who cares? Why don't other states care about this in a divorce proceeding? Because in, oh, wait, wait, I'm not gonna get there quite yet. I'm gonna first talk about, well, actually, no, yeah, I want, to get, I want to go here and I'll go back to Jeff Bezos here in just a second. Texas Constitution prohibits the foreclosure of a homestead. So you cannot foreclose on people's homestead unless it falls under a specific thing within the Constitution. And guess what? Number three. So Section 50A3, an OLT of partition imposed against the entirety of the property by a court order or by a written agreement of the parties to the partition. So in other words, this allows someone in the future to be able to foreclose on the property. I know this, is, this might be a little bit difficult to understand, but let me give you a, a scenario that might happen. You have someone that gets divorced. They're just granted uh, an interest in the property. Not get, it's not partitioned. There's no oilty lien uh, granted to them and the spouse doesn't pay and they want to go foreclose and they go and they go do a judicial foreclosure if all the defendant has to do is hey the text constitution prevents this and they go well i i re, I, I don't qualify for this but i used to own that property too i used to you know i used to live there when we were married well if you don't have this old of partition here then sorry too bad can't do it so let's go back to Jeff Bezos here and talk about a little bit of what you want to do. So you're in the real estate business, maybe you're in the title company, or maybe you're getting divorced and you're getting a little worried because you have that little conniving spouse, you know, you don't trust them out there. You know, the Jeff Bezos. I, Jeff Bezos, actually, that sounded like he had, he did a pretty good job in his divorce. He didn't go overly crazy. I'm just using his example because it's a really funny picture over here. Um, okay. First, what you want to do is ascertain if the divorce is final. 
divorce is not final. You don't want to be going out and buying new houses and stuff without any kind of written agreement because you buy a new property, it can be community property. And if there is a fi final divorce decree, if there is, you want to review that to see if there was a, a partition, a, a loyalty partition given in the, in, the, um, in the divorce decree. At any event, if I am closing on a property, I want to make sure if I was getting divorced and my spouse was going to go and we were going to refinance the house and they were going to get it, well, if I didn't have my check in hand, I would want to make sure that I had an oldly deed, note, and deed of trust. And I held on to that. And then that was filed while there was a three-day right of rescission. And then I will sign a release. And then a check would be given to me after that's done. Okay? And I explain right here what you would want to do in the steps following up to uh, uh, if you're a title company wanting to close on a, an oilty lien or something like that, or if you're dealing in divorce proceeding. As you can see, all the idea, the only idea is just take the word for what it is, it means equity. It's how do we be equitable in real estate when there's a lawsuit that's been filed and we're trying to partition it up, divide it up, and we're trying to make sure someone gets paid. We want to give the person a lien and we want to give them the right to, in the state of Texas, we want to give them a right to be able to foreclose on the property later on down the road. And that's it.